Hello and welcome to a new Squadcast. This is, of course, the place where we nerd out about all things gaming and geek. I'm Camille Salazar Hadaway, and joining me is my co-host for today, Aaron Caboose Coast, as well as Steve Vivari, a writer from our website, squadstate.com. Uh, he's joining us again, so it's great to have you back, Steve. We also here. have a very familiar face, a special guest, first time on the podcast. You may actually know her from the world of gaming. She was previously on EP Daily, Reviews on the Run, Xbox All for One. She's hosted a bunch of esports tournaments and also from right here on Squad. Now you can find her hosting TSN's Digital Sports Center, where she's bridging the gap between gaming and sports and also showing her a Blue Jays fandom. It's Marissa Roberto. Hello, girl. Oh my goodness, what an intro. I what, like that. When did I get one like that? No, yeah, no, yeah, no. Only Marissa gets an intro like that. Marissa's the only person ever. Let all the future guests know. Yeah, okay. screw you, screw you all. Especially screw you, you all. Um, <laughs> no, you I, that's very that's very kind. Thank you so much. Um now whatever the second you did that, I'm like, I thought of that opening that I did for squad that I always like it's on my reel now. It's like I'm not like other esports moms. I'm a cool mom. <laughs> Because <laughs> like, you like you're getting older, but like you still cover games, but like you're still in esports, but you still gotta like, you know, you're still like young at heart. So it's like, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be the esports mommy. All right. She's a cool mom. She's a cool mom. Marissa, like, but I, I, said, I, you, like, I know. She's okay, like, like that's my sorry. endearing way of saying hi, I miss you, love you. Aww. And you know what? We all Aww. miss you and love you. We've all had the pleasure to work with you, whether it was through Xbox or through Squad. Um, so it's great to have you come on the show. I feel like it's coming full circle. Um, how do you feel to be back whenever you're doing anything gaming? Because you do cover a lot of sports. I see you try to trinkle in some gaming on TSN as well. But when yeah. you come back to the world of gaming, how is it to like just be back among your people because we yeah. are your people? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> always and forever, Camille. Uh, no, that's the thing is that I, I I try to hold on to it as much as possible in my everyday, right? Because I uh, this is just a life that I came from. So um, yeah, Digital Sports Center doesn't have a lot of gaming stuff. Um, very rarely do we, but. Um, uh, my producer and I, Matt, who used to also be at Squad, is yeah. like we do a weekly, we're trying to do a weekly gaming kind of new show, but more like we skew it more to our sports audience. So like obviously there's going to be a lot of NHL news in there, like any any child content we're going to have, we're going to put it in there. Like obviously NBA 2K, like people were pretty upset with, yes. uh, you know, the little the little added purchases <laughs> that they need to make or like little ads that pop up uh, mm -hmm. in game the other week. So like anything, any drama going on within like the sports games is obviously beneficial to me just because I need to put that in there. But I'm trying to slowly allow people to kind of accept esports in a way that's not so uh, in their face. Like I don't want to, I don't want to make people feel like they have to like esports, like they have to get into this. No, like it's just something that I'm into. It, if you want, there are some similarities between people between athletes and professional gamers, there are plenty of similarities there between orgs, even a lot of athletes buying different orgs and like putting them out there and having been the face of these orgs. So like there is a lot of crossover and mm -hmm. I'm just trying to facilitate the conversation around that crossover. Mm -hmm. And that's perfect because um, I find it hard as a gamer. I don't know about uh, Aaron or Steve, if you find this hard uh, or your experience with sports games. I don't play a lot of sports games. I used to play like a ton of NBA Jam, um, but I'm a huge basketball fan. So sometimes with my cousin, who's like a huge 2K, uh, like he plays every year, every 2K, he's always trying to get me to play it, but there's so much to know about the game. And because I'm more into like first person, like adventure games, story games, I find it hard yeah. to connect with him. So yeah. then I just go to Marissa and then I check out what you're doing and I'm like, okay, this is what's happening yeah. in that sports <laughs> yeah. game. And I try to be the cool, oh, I'm a cool gamer sports you know, cousin <laughs> that you can go to. <laughs> so thank you, Marissa, for that. <laughs> I'm a cool sports mom. Yeah, no problem. I mean, you know that I don't, like, I even tell the boys here too that I work with, like, I don't play a lot of sports games either. I will watch, like, my husband plays a ton of sports games. Like, I, I like, you can see probably right now he's jumping, <laughs> he's jumping in the chair. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, like, I just kind of always know what's happening because of that. If it's not on my screen, it's on his screen, right? So, um, and I'll play, like, we'll do an EASHL and I'll be goalie because, like, that's the only position I can really play with any of that. But, like, I don't know, there's something about sports games that I've never been able to truly tap into unless it's like, I don't know, a Mario sports game. It's yeah. probably not something, or like Lynx. 
Um, <laughs> it's probably not something that I'm going to jump into because yeah, I like the story driven games. Like you've seen me, anything yeah. competitive, when, like I, str- I get stressed. Yes. Yeah. Stress. Playing my, Smash Online? Are you crazy? No. I, I'm I'm a natural born gamer. I'm just good at everything. Uh, okay. you know, like, obviously. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> but no, not. like so like most multiplayer games when I play them with my brother, I am the one who's like leading the team, or or at least just between the two of us leading in score, right? But when it comes to yeah. any sports game, whether it's NBA 2K, whether it's NHL, FIFA, virtual tennis. Whatever it might be, he destroys me. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Something flips in his brain, and he becomes a gamer when it comes to <laughs> sports games. He can't do it with Halo, but he could yeah. do it with any sports game. So that's that's as far as my experience goes with sports games. And I agree with you, Camille. When it comes to getting updates, I'm going to Marissa. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Hey, yeah. guys. I don't know. Oh. Now you built me up. I don't want to let you down. I know. You better not let me down. I know where you, you live. Be- yeah. I don't know. Whoa. No, you don't, Camille. No. I know. I'm like, I actually don't know where you live, but I will find oh, out. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm moving. Soon I'll be doing Going all of my podcasting from an empty room just like you. What the hell? <laughs> Stop bringing up this room, okay? Everyone's talking about this room. I will sometime get to it, okay? I'm not making any promises. But what I will oh, get to good. it is our topics for the day. Thank you, Marissa, for that transition. Uh, we're going to be talking about Marissa and her Game Awards, Canadian Game Awards win, which is just phenomenal. I can't wait to actually jump into that discussion with you and how you felt through that process. We're also going to be talking about last week, the biggest news in gaming, which is AOC breaking records on Twitch with her stream. We're going to be talking about a new reveal from Mortal Kombat 11. Uh, let's guess who's talking about that. Probably Caboose. It, it's... It's Caboose. And then we're talking about Xbox Stream Stick, the teaser. Steve's going to bring us all the de- details on that. Uh, chat, I just want to remind you guys, if you have any questions throughout the stream, just pop them in chat. If there's any clippable moments, like my eyes are going all different ways, clip it. Send it to me. I like to laugh at myself. And I, I like to also laugh at Caboose. So any embarrassing moments for Caboose, please send those to me as well. Who's getting bullied today? <laughs> Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's as long as you're goes. willing to admit it, yeah. <laughs> now, now, Marissa, um, earlier this, well, actually, it wasn't actually too far along ago. It was in September, I feel mm-hmm. like this mm-hmm. year. Yeah. yeah, this year is just flying by. Uh, but September, the Canadian Game Awards actually happened, and you were up for the esports host of the year award. Uh, Now, this is specifically an award that is talking about someone who impacts the community as a host. And, you know, you were nominated with Brody, Leaf X Moore, Entero, um, Isaac, like so many great people. How is that experience for you, firstly, being a part of the Canadian Game Awards in this capacity, and then also being amongst these people in these this category? Uh, well, first it was, it was wild. Like I did not think I was going to get nominated. I know people, everyone says that and definitely did not think I was going to win because I looked at my, I knew I was going to, I knew I was going to beat Leaf X for sure. Like 100%, <laughs> like he was toast, but um, no, like in, I thought in tarot, I just thought in tarot was going to win it. Honestly, like I, the whole time I'm like, well, it's going to be in tarot just because of how, ingrained he is with that community like he whenever you see him tweet like his tweets pop off because of how invested that community is and how much he invests in that community right he lives it every single day and for a variety esports host like it's hard to tell where you fit into each niche like where you fit into each bubble so it's hard for me it was hard for me to gauge that and how how much of an impact I would have had on on each of those communities because they were all so different. Also, it was from 2019, right? So it was like from a year ago and we were hosting squad. Like there was there was a lot of things happening and you kind of forget because you're you just kind of like move on to the next event, like the next thing and you you forget about how many things you did in the year prior, right? So yeah. because the awards were at the end of this year, so it's hard to like tap into and I, I felt like I had to make excuses like when when people saw that I won, I'm like, oh, like I hope people don't think poorly. Like I hope people don't think like I stole this somehow. You know what I mean? Like you kind of start apologizing because you don't want <laughs> very Canadian. Like you start start apologizing <laughs> that you won um, because you don't want to take anything away from anybody else. Because I do think that every single one of those guys, oh my gosh, so incredibly talented. So it was just like a, uh, are you are you sure? 
are you sure you guys? But no, I was like super grateful, like super pumped about it. I was telling everybody there, uh, my boss at TSN was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like everyone was super pumped about it. Um, yeah, it was, it was an honor and I am um, just really happy about it. Like I'm happy about it because I know that um, like the people that went into making the decision to award these things, like put some thought into it and they really like did look into how much we try, at least, at least how much I try to do for the community. I don't know if I'm, I succeed at all, but I do. I really do try to make sure that everyone kind of knows and loves esports in some way or another. Yeah. And, and that's one thing that I remember actually, I think earlier on in our relationship, one of the first times I met you like, and actually talked to you was at an R6 event. Do you remember that in a oh movie theater? <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Yes. I was hosting yeah. an R6 event for Ubisoft and it was the first time they were trying to do something. It was like something competitive. Something competitive. Um, yeah. It was a wild thing to celebrate the game coming out. The first time I had done anything like that in a movie theater and then like a bunch of stuff went wrong. And I remember like having to tap dance a lot. I remember that event. It was, <laughs> yeah. uh, there was a lot going on. <laughs> You were like shouting things at me from the audience. I was like, like, okay, here we go. Kind of like improv on stage, quizzing me about when the least won the Stanley Cup last. I'm like, like, what? What? Isn't this R6? What? Yeah. No, no, there's a bunch of bros in there that were just trying to get at me. It's fine. It's okay. Wait, what's the answer to that question? When when the least won? 1862? Kate, you know what? Can we mute his mic, please? Can we just mute Caboose? Hey, if you're going to come at me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to swing back. <laughs> me? Are you, I'm sorry. Are you not from, what, are you not from Toronto? Do you not, do you not cheer for the Leafs? What, what, what was it, like 1600 BC, something like that? Like, oh, my God. Okay, well, the answer wow. is we were not alive. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm on the right track. Yeah. Um, okay, but you're a Leaf fan, aren't you, Caboose? Uh, sure, yeah. No, absolutely. Caboose, do you even follow hockey? Okay, I used to uh, a long while ago. Like, not to not to derail everything. I used to a long while ago when my brother and my dad were really into it. And I think it was the year when it was Game 7 against Boston and we were up, like, 42 nothing, and Boston still came back and beat us. That my dad was like, I'm never watching hockey again. And then I was like, wow. I was like, all right, me, me neither. Yeah. <laughs> it's an easy call for you, it sounds like. Yeah. 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 That was the end of that in your hockey adventure. So exactly. It's crazy. It's crazy how like a, a sport or a team will do that to you. Like it'll just wreck you to your core that you, yes. you know what? Yeah. I can't do this anymore. Crazy. You know what team doesn't do that? The Raptors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're awesome. Still can't <laughs> A hundred percent. Yeah. There's a chance to solve our hearts. Yeah. Um, Guys, we were at E3 when that happened. That was wild. Oh my God. Remember that? Yeah. That was a good time. It was, was a good, good time. time. Um, I do want to get to hundreds. Could gather. Yeah, when people could gather, we could go outside and not meet <laughs> their first teams. Um, yeah. Slasher 13 in chat says when the esports host nominations were revealed, I had no doubt in my mind that Marissa would take home the dub. That that's super oh, that's sweet. Very sweet. Uh, Steve, Why do you I, lie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve, I know you were a part of the whole process for yes. um, the Canadian Game Awards. So I want to know, like, when you are looking at a category like esports host, like, how do you mm-hmm. guys come up with these nominations? Because, like, for me, it is someone who's very impactful. When I think of the Canadian game scene, yes, I think of Intero and I think of Marissa because right. she's done so much locally, like in Toronto and even um, outside of Toronto as well, yeah. and mm-hmm. getting that recognition in the States. So, like, for you, when you were going through this process, what was that like? So I can only speak on the voting process. I wasn't part yeah. of the nomination process, but vote uh, the voting process it's always hard, especially when you're voting on like a personality, uh, a figure, a host, uh, especially in the Canadian esports scene where it's it's so tight knit, right? Uh, yeah. The esports yeah. community here in Canada, and it's always hard. So yeah, you have to take an objective point of view, obviously. Um, but yeah, the the way I I came out, I was like, okay, who who's a positive figure in the industry? Who who's using their voice for the the better good? Um, and of course. You know, Marissa's there, and um, yeah, I when, when I saw the results when we we were streaming the the whole event and everything, uh, I I was elated. Uh, I was because you know, looking not only in 2019 but the, but the past years over and over, it, it was uh, it was an award 
worth going to Marissa for. So yeah. yeah, that's very sweet. I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah. I feel like uh, I feel like this is never gonna happen again. When you guys were when you guys were <laughs> posting and, and Steph's like, okay, well, I mean, her and and Sato like they're doing sports now, so they kind of left. Mm-hmm. I'm like. Uh, Oh my god, so weird. <laughs> I'm still doing this stuff. But yeah, like sports definitely uh it kind of takes over only because it is like the bigger entity for a mainstream audience to know, right? But right. For, to me, like I still feel like esports is is number one in my mind. Like when I go to work every day, like I know I'm talking about sports, but like they're still I don't know, like my my Twitter feed, my socials, like I feel like everything I do is still kind of like surrounding gaming. So yeah. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, like we'll see. I, I really hope the Canadian scene just continues to get better. I feel like we are getting there. It's still it's still going to take a while, though, especially now that we're all kind of inside. We were supposed mm-hmm. to have events for, right. you know, Defiant and, and you know, Ultra as well. Like we were supposed to have these big things happen for these amazing teams that are actually do like Ultra pulled some crazy stuff off this year, but we didn't really get to enjoy it as a city because, well, we couldn't get together. So um, I don't even know what the Call of Duty scene really is here yet, right? Like we yeah. haven't even tapped into that because right. of COVID. So, so in your opinion, what is it about the Canadian scene that um, I don't want to say being held back, but what do you think it is about the Canadian scene that is stopping it from actually like bursting open with like all this love for esports? Because I feel like we're always trailing behind. Yeah, I mean, I think that's just the case with Canada and and, <laughs> well, and oh, most Canada. things like most and the Maple industries. Leafs. Okay, no, no, is this is that me or someone else? Is that oh, you? Who's beeping outside? Sorry, There's, <laughs> there are things happening outside my window. Um, that guy yeah, heard me and he started backing up his truck. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you say about the Maple Leafs? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Um, yeah, I don't know. It'll be. It's just gonna be one of those things where people don't take us and and they just people don't take Canadians seriously f- with a lot of things, right? Like we're just always kind of the butt of every joke, like, oh sure, you Canadians, like all just all of that. So um I don't know. It's gonna take it's gonna take a while. It's it's just gonna take a while. We don't we also have like we have smaller prize pools, we have a smaller community, like everything is a little bit smaller right. here. So um mm-hmm. it'll always kind of I think look that way, but I like it because then it still makes it feel like grassroots to me. Like no matter what, I will still feel like because we know we literally know all the faces in this community. And I think that's really special, right? That we can like see someone recognize them instead of like, there's something special about like this kind of family that we have, especially in Toronto. We have to, we have to branch outside it though. Yeah. I agree. Like, it feels like we're all like this, this big family yeah. in within like all connected within the esports scene or just in like Canadian gaming, if you will. Yeah. You know, like everyone knows everyone. And I like that. Well, yeah. It, it, everyone has like a vested interest in what, the others doing and helping to support that person. I feel like it's there. There's like a family aspect to it that really mm-hmm. puts us uh, apart from like the U S gaming industry that I really like. Yeah. And yeah, I there's no like, like competition. There's no, no. I, I've got to do better than this person, you know? Yeah. Just, yeah. I feel like we all recognize. Yeah. I feel like we all recognize that we're like below the U S in terms of like recognition and all that. So we're all doing our best to be like, okay, we got, we got to gas each yeah. other up. We got to get yeah. ourselves yeah. out there. Yeah. Also, and like I, the money that yeah. we're paid to is a lot smaller. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and that's <laughs> and like, I feel like it, it comes down to like the companies that are being able to put on these events and really mm-hmm. investing into the Canadian market because there's tons of fans here. Um, we've seen that with the OWL and Toronto Defiant and what they're doing here and like the fans that came out to their debut, right? Um, we're seeing that with Call of Duty, but we're still trying to discover those CDL fans that are within the city and have them show up. So I think it's a a mixture of these organizations that are holding the money to put it in Canadian hands and also Mm. the fans that are here to speak out that they are Canadian fans. Like, it's Mm. pretty surprising as well. People that, or hosts or personalities that are out there in, uh, that are big, like Pokimane, uh, which we'll talk about in the next topic, but she's Canadian. Like there's so many Canadians that are out there that sometimes you have to research that they're Canadian Mm -hmm. before you find that out. So I think really showcasing that a pride in our country. Yeah, of course. I'm shroud. Like, hello. Yeah. Yeah. Big Canadian boy. Seriously. I'm learning this. Wait, what? Really? I'm just now learning this. Yeah. Yeah. I bet you grew up like a block away from you. 
Probably. I, I just learned recently that Disguise Toast is from Toronto as well, apparently. Oh, I didn't know that. Like, that's like, it, you, seriously, it's it's crazy to think like how many uh, Canadians streamers, like, yeah. made it. You know, and streamers me. make an absolute no. bank. Like these guys are, these guys are just doing so well. Yeah. Like it, the, like they're serious goals for sure. But like you just know that once once they transcend to a certain level, it's like there's no catching them. Like they're just shooting mm-hmm. stars. It's incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Risk Rude says, uh, so we just have to move Canada to California. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Everyone get Wait. on a bus. We'll go down. <laughs> let's let's do it. Risk Rude, isn't yeah. that Tyler? I think that may be Tyler in there. I think you might have changed yeah. it. Yeah. Tyler, but uh is it Tyler, what color sweater? What color sweater are you wearing today? Brown? I know. <laughs> a brown. <laughs> maybe. He <laughs> said maybe. Okay. Um, uh, but but you know, we have a good thing going on in Canada. I do want to talk about your experience because obviously when you think traditional sports, and you kind of touched upon that, you have a little bit of a hurdle with esports or just gaming being taken seriously. Um, do you still find that's as big of a hurdle as people are seem to think it is? Uh, not when it comes to not when it comes to me selling it to my higher ups of mm. in the company. Like not mm. not now because I, I think they realize the value in it, right? Because um, you're just seeing a lot more sponsors jump on board with everything, like endemic, non-endemic sponsors. You're seeing that with esports. You're seeing that with gaming. Like gaming is the way for all of these companies to reach a younger audience, a younger Mm -hmm. audience that will have a job soon or maybe just getting their first job and will have their own money to spend and they're going to spend it on video games. They're going to spend it on the the people who advertise with video games. So um, this this is literally the ticket. Games are the ticket. Esports is the future. Like, I mean, I I feel like such a politician when I say that, like, this is it. Like, (laughs) esports is the future. It's true, though. Like, this is how you're getting these... These people who are sitting there watching these streamers are sitting there watching these games are sitting there on Twitch, just actively invested in chat. Like, how else are you going to get these attentive eyeballs, right? Like, yeah, it, it right. has to be with gaming. It has to be with esports. Um, like, also, because we're, everything is digital now, too. Like, we're all going digital. It's just kind of less on linear, more on digital. So this is the way to do it. It really is the wave of the future. And I think that more and more execs are seeing that. Uh, especially when it comes to to dollars, right? Because it all comes down to like how we're how we're feeding ourselves. It's all about the money. Yeah. Well, I mean, we got to keep the lights on, right? So yeah. that's how um that's how we do it. Sponsors. So then, if you have like obviously for sports fans, you would suggest like a sports game if they want to get into gaming. But in general, mm-hmm. is there that one go to game that you would suggest to someone to try to get them on our side? <laughs> Well, I tried Animal Choose Crossing wisely. for a lot of work. Um, <laughs> I really tried with Animal Crossing for like a minute because that was it. But I feel like now because Among Us is so mm. popular and people can just download it on their phone and play for the first time, like this is it. Among mm. Us is it right now for this moment. It's crazy. This game came out in 2017 or something, right? So yep. it's wild how yeah. like it just – yeah. So it just kind of like somebody plays it. So people have fun on stream That's and then it. it does this. This is exactly the power of gamers and like what they can do. The fact that they're able to pull in a politician. I know we're going to talk about that soon, but like, and have how many people tune in over 300,000 people tune in to watch this game that they didn't know anything about for the first time, but they're jumping into it. And it's easy to understand. It's totally yeah. easy to pick up and understand. So, um, I mean, the politics of the game itself are not, and you got to like be good at, you know, being like, being kind of like a liar, but, um, other than that, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> 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 Which I can confirm, Marissa's good. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, just just I'm, I'm, I'm not. I get, no, I'm really scared. Like I get scared when I'm an imposter. I don't know how to handle it. I don't know how to. I don't know how to like lie right. I don't know how to like because you got to keep track of all your tasks, your pretend tasks, mm-hmm. right? Because they ask you what you're yep. up to and what you're doing. I'm like, uh, uh I'm always like med, med bay. I was. I had to scan and met. like you. Like I don't know. A lot of pressure. Just, the absolute yeah. worst experience is when you get imposter f- for the first time you're playing the game. Yes. Because yeah. then you're truly lost. Like it's over for you. You know. Completely. Yeah. And so that that's it. I'm getting people at work um, as well at TSN to download it. I'm like, you guys, I've been bugging for weeks. Like download, just download on your phone. Super, it's free. We'll just jump in and play. So I'm gonna get a group together so they can experience it for the first time. Have them some. This girl's messaging me. She's like, okay, I think I'm doing this wrong. How do I win? It's, she's always getting defeated. I'm like, listen, it's not always on you. Don't worry. That's, don't don't put that kind of pressure on yourself. You don't always have to win. It's just about the experience, right? Yeah. right. So. 
I think, but that's been my history with video games too, is that when I was reviewing video games at first, it was mobile games as well. So um, it's just an easier, it's also an easier sell when you're a female in this space, especially like 10 years ago to be like, yeah, I play mobile games and nobody really questions it. And it's just like yeah. an easy, okay, like I can try this too. And, and people aren't as scared to download something on their iPad or iPhone, um, when, especially when it's free, they can just try it. It's like an easy puzzle right. game or something, like any kind of little something any kind of like taster i can give somebody about like how video games actually work and how you can have fun with no with any genre you want um yes. mobile games is kind of like the gateway mobile games is the gateway drug to to video games if we're if i'm being honest now nowadays yeah all right quote it marissa yeah. 2020 <laughs> let's run with it um, again hunter slasher 13 says among us really is a psychological experiment so now marissa when you go back to your tsn buds you could figure out who they really are Put it down. I, know. I know. I already know who's going to be the best. Who's going to be the best at lying? Like I'm, I'm already well aware of who's going to be clean at house when we start playing this game. So it's fine. And it's usually, it's usually the same people who do really well in like board games as well. Like any kind of like super in depth, like whatever it is. If it's like Catan or anything yeah. that you need to like, you know, pull some kind of deals. Like yeah. those people that win those games all the time, they're also very good at Among Us. Uh, before we move on to our next topic, I want to actually touch upon something that you mentioned uh, just now. You were talking about as a woman and going into mobile games while you're working in the industry, especially earlier on in your career, um, it's easier for people to expect uh, or sorry, accept. So for you now being in gaming for so long and through your journey, how do you see the perception of women in gaming and in terms of how we're treated? Uh, oh my gosh, it's gotten so much better. It's gotten so yeah. much better. And I think it's gotten so much better, not because we as women have changed, but because the men around us have a little bit. Like I'm seeing a mm -hmm. lot more feminism with the, the um, and people are less afraid to call themselves feminists, I think, because they realize that the term of it is actually just equality for everyone. Um, it's not just like some bad word that <laughs> they put this label to put on women who are like, Mah. Um, It's not that way at all. It's literally about equality. And I'm seeing more and more men who, just respect women standing up and saying something for women because it's nice to have those champions too, right? Like some somebody on your side. And even though like we're strong enough to fight our own fights, it's nice to have um, men around who completely support you and know exactly the type of person you are and know that like your intentions are good intentions and, and they have those too. So it's nice to have a support system of, of just really good guys. Like we're lucky because yeah. we work with really good guys, like at squad, even at EP, at EP, like had the best guys at bar down. These guys are just good guys that just like respect women. And it's incredibly valuable because it gives you confidence to do your job where you feel like you're not constantly having to defend yourselves in the comments. But now because I have so much free time, not in my own comments, but I go into TSN's comments and I fight with people there whenever there's a <laughs> post about women in sports, because yeah. it's the same thing. Like it's the same thing you see it over and over again and pe people just wanting to make a joke like I got a comment back like why can't you just let guys say what they want it's just a joke it's just like we're having fun in the comments like no because you have to be accountable for your words yeah. you have to be accountable yeah. for whatever you're putting out there in the world because it comes back at you right so like just understand that whatever you say if you're going to own it I will respect you like own your opinion that's fine but like don't come back at me and say well I'm just I'm just kidding it's just a joke it's just a joke like no your words have meaning and they could really exactly. affect somebody who's reading them especially if it's about mm -hmm. them and that's why so many women don't follow their dreams like if they have a goal of being a basketball player for example like in sports like they are going to read comments about whatever they like body shame them. They anything to do with the fact yeah. that they're a woman and they'll try to attach some kind of comment onto it. It's just so damaging to any kind of a woman's psyche. Sure. But even like young kids too, just guys and girls, like you don't want to have any kind of discouragement from someone's dreams. Like, can you imagine just growing up and then like thinking back on your life and when you used to play basketball or thinking back on your life when you used to play video games and wanting to have pursued that dream, but like you didn't because somebody made fun of you for the thing that you liked. So you just let it go. And then you're just living this other life because like you let those words affect you. Mm -hmm. And like yep. that happens so often to young people. And we really have to be careful of what we put mm -hmm. out there because these brains aren't fully developed yet, right? Like they, <laughs> they're not in the comments fighting for themselves. They're just reading these horrible things and thinking, oh, well, that's going to happen to me. So just forget it. Like they back away. And well, we they get the impression that. that that's okay and that yes. they can do that. You know, like there's there's too many there's too many issues. The blessing and the curse of the internet is that on one hand, you find a lot of people, a huge community of people that are on your side or that agree with what you like your thinking is or your ideologies are. But on the other hand, there is uh, the power of anonymity, and mm -hmm. people like right. to abuse that power often. I've seen it, maybe not even near the extent of someone like yourself, Marissa, or even you, Camille. 
but I've definitely gotten my fair share of it. You know, my comment section sometimes gets a little oh, insane. Oh man, yours are ruthless um, sometimes. I yeah, and 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 I think and I, and I've experienced exactly what you're talking about. And that like when you when somebody says something nasty and you reply, they're just like, oh, I was just joking. Yeah, it's like well, you've already said it. You've already put it out into the void. Uh, you can't take it back unless no. in the moment you want to let me know you're just messing around. Okay. Sure. Even yeah. then you may, sometimes people go a little too far, but once you've already put it out there, there's no takesies backsies. Like you exactly. put it out there and I've received it in the way that you've clearly intended it to be received. So when you exactly. say it's a joke, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to take that and be like, Oh, he was just joking. Yeah, you know? exactly. And it, I feel like, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks. And I feel like people online, um, I play a lot of Call of Duty or just in lobbies of games, they think they know you. Like they oh, hear yeah. your voice and they could say whatever they want. And then they expect you to be like, oh, I was just joking. I don't know you like that. So don't make those yes. jokes with me because you have not proven anything that you're you know, supporting me as a woman, as a woman of color in any way. Mm -hmm. There, there's no joking about that when, when I don't know you at all. So it's, mm -hmm. it's great that you're seeing, and I've seen it as well, the, how women are treated based on my own experiences. It has improved for the reason that you do have a lot more allies, a lot, especially organizations or companies that are coming out and trying to do things against harassment, like mm -hmm. Activision is doing in Call of Duty with their lobbies, right? So I feel like we need more of that. There's a lot more that has to be done, but it's great to see that progress already. And I, I just can't wait to see how much further it could go. Yeah, imagine if women weren't constantly abused online when they, when as soon as guys hear their voice online, like imagine they did not get abused and they would actually maybe stay and play those games. Like I literally oh. gave up playing online games forever ago, like forever ago because of just the amount I felt like I was bullied and like also to feel like I had to, I don't know, prove myself in some way, like playing Halo online. Do you know how many times I got teabagged? Do you have any idea? <laughs> like, do you have any idea? Although I laughed. <laughs> I did laugh at that because I do think it's funny. It's just like when you're younger and you're just getting into it for the first time, you're just like, I, like you can't, you'll never, you just feel right. like you'll never be yeah. good enough and no one, and, and you're just constantly being put down. So it's hard to kind of like build yourself up again. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, that's I, a shame because there's so many great games out there that have these awesome communities behind them, but because of just one bad transaction you have with a different mm -hmm. player that can just sour you forever. And then you won't, some, yeah. some young person will never touch that game again. And then, yeah. That's it. A lost experience oh, yeah. just because of one one person on the internet that wants to hide behind a, a gamer tag, right? It, it, it's, it's a shame. There's like a reason why, an like, there's the, there's a reason why whenever you see a clip of somebody in voice chat with another person, and it's just like this wholesome experience. It's such a big deal because yeah. they're yeah. so few and far between that everyone's like, wait, this happens? Like, <laughs> what? I you did know? I did have that once, and it was super surprising for me. I was playing uh, Killzone. I think it was Killzone Three. And like, I just went online and, and I'm like, listen, guys, I don't actually ever play this game. I never play online. And they were just so mm -hmm. sweet and wonderful. And they were like helping me find things. And I'm like, oh my God, yeah. is this what a <laughs> <laughs> like, I love that game that much more. And I remember giving a pretty good score too for on, like my online experience as well. Mm -hmm. Cause it was just like, wow. I just, I just wasn't expecting people to be so kind. And like, yeah. it, that shouldn't be surprising. But like, no, right. <laughs> right. It's great when you do find those communities that like are just so helpful. I actually find with Among Us, despite it being all about, you know, murdering and killing off your crewmates, um, it's actually like if you're playing with new people, they're usually really helpful. I'm not too sure if it's because they're trying to trick you into believing that they're good <laughs> and then they murder yeah, you and you different games yeah. for sure. So I don't know. I'm still figuring that one out. I need to play a few more games. <laughs>